Growing up, we had a lot of dumb toys. And then we had a lot of toys to make us look dumb. Let's talk about educational toys. Ugh. Welcome back to the Junk Room, everybody. It's me, the Junk Man, coming back at you with the second video of the day. That's right, we do two videos a day. One at noon that I call the Junk Man Nooner. And then at 8 o'clock, another video on Wednesday nights over on the live channel. If you had not subscribed to that, you better get on it. Because we do the live call-in action figure podcast. This is where you get to call in, talk to me, call me on the phone. All you need is a phone. You don't need anything special for your computer. Call me on the phone. We'll talk toys, and you'll get to be on the podcast. That's a lot of fun also. So we got a lot going on over here at both channels. So links in the description below. The other channel is That Jumpman Live. Check that out. Live stream clips and just a lot of fun over there also. If you don't want to miss any fun, now do you? Today we're going to talk about educational toys. Ugh, just the name alone, you know, makes you sick thinking about it. You would hate it when you found out it's your birthday, you get a present, you can't wait, you get it, you see it's all wrapped up in a box, you're like, oh man, my aunt got me a present, I can't believe it. She's got a lot of money, she don't have any kids, it's going to be a great present. And you rip it over and you're like, ugh, math flashcards. Ugh, educational toys. Now, there were a few educational toys here and there that could combine education and fun, and they did it pretty good. But as soon as you learned that it was an educational toy, you were like, I don't want to play with that. I don't. It was best that they disguised it to where you didn't know you were getting educated. So I got 10 right here, 10 educational toys from back in the 70s and 80s that I had as a kid. I just seen some of the images. It's just, ugh. Whew. Made me, made me, made me sick. Anyway, let's talk about the first one on Mrs. The Robot. It's one of those disguises when you see it in the store, you think that's going to be fun. You get home and you find out you're having school out of school. And we're talking about Alfie. Alfie, I think that was his name. Alfie 2. I don't know it was Alfie 1, but while looking up images for Alfie 2, there was in the 70s an Alfie 1. I never had that one. Alfie. Now, I'll be honest, uh, I couldn't remember what this did. I know it taught you taught you your colors, taught you a bunch of different things. I remember having this. I don't remember playing with it. I probably played with it the first day, and then it tried to teach me what blue was and what green was, and I was like, ah, educational crap, and I probably threw it in the closet and never touched it again. So, Alfie is at number 10. So, let's go to number 9. Fisher Price made a lot, a lot of good toys. They did, they did. And they was very good at making a toy seem like a toy and not educational. And one that I remember having played with this a lot, even when I was too old to play with, I remember having this, the Fisher Price play desk. Anyone remember this? Now, this was kind of, like I said, it's kind of disguised as educational. You don't really think about it because you got your chalkboard on it, but it came with a bunch of letters with magnets on it, your alphabet. So it kind of taught you alphabets and stuff. So you were playing with it and you were learning what an A was, what a C was. You was winner. You was figuring out what the B was. You was figuring out all these letters and playing. You found out what the number seven looked like for the first time. You remember that? Remember the first time you found out what number seven looked like? <sighs> Crazy day. Remember when you found out that a W is just two U's lo looped together? So that's why they call it a double U because it's two U's. I mean, it blew your mind. Uh, so, yeah, I played with this for a long time. I remember writing on the chalkboard. Never would have raced good. Never would have raced good after a couple years. Just wasn't no good anymore. Oh, but the Fisher Price. Play disc. Play disc. You remember that? The play disc? Of course I remember that. I used to make my own cease and desist orders with it. All oh, those little kids at school talk bad about me. They get sued. He remembers it. Let's talk about another one on the list here. This is one that most of you guys, this was a popular one in the in the 80s and probably in the 70s. Well, I think it's more 80s. Speak and spell. This is where it would actually speak a word and you had to spell it out. Whew. I remember having this thing. It was like a lot of toys on this list. It was nerve wracking. I was like, oh my God, what did he say? How am I going to spell that? I'm trying to say it in my head. Oh my God, he just said Jerusalem. I can't even say the word right. How am I going to spell it right? It was nerve wracking. And then you hit the wrong letter. And, ah! God, it felt like you're having a heart attack. It's like, gee, give me a chance here. Sorry. Sorry, I know cat has two T's. Shit. Oh, speak and spell. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Even had to read words. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be horrible. Here's one I've talked about a lot of times. Number seven, Little Professor. It looks like a calculator. You think when you get it, oh, I got my first calculator. This is going to be great. A calculator I can add up. See how old I'm going to be in the year 2000 and everything. 
and then you found out it has math quizzes on it where they, you got like 20 math questions you just got to go real fast you can't you can't think you're on a time limit here it just makes you so nervous and this is why I hate math all these toys that are related to math is why I hate math I did horrible at math I don't know anything about math uh, all I know about math is Five times two is ten. That's all I know, and I know four plus eight is seven. That's all I can tell you. That's all I can tell you. Little Professor. What's that? You had Little Professor? <laughs> Why would I need a calculator? I am the Great Maloney, the plunder from down under. I wouldn't need a calculator. That's for dumb kids. I was born with a degree in algebra. I'm sure you're really good at that. I'm sure you're really good. Here's one. Uh, I call this the Farmer Says toy, but I guess it's called See and Say. That they made a lot of different ones, but this was like a big round thing. I'll put a picture, but I'm gonna describe it to you anyway. Had a big round thing. Now the one I had in the 70s and 80s had kind of like a record player on the inside of it. But you pull the big lever down, like you know, it got you trained for uh, playing slot machines in Vegas or something. But you pull it down, the thing would spin around, and it would land on like a cow, and it say moo, and you spin it. Again. Again, it's spinning around, and you go, uh, hit a frog, and it do a frog, ribbit, ribbit. You learned all kinds of animal sounds thanks to this, and if you're like me, you pull that down, let it spin around, then you would touch the spinner, and you can make it scratch, you know, like a, like a DJ. The, the farmer says, the farmer says, the farmer says, it's very cool. I know it's not a good impression, but it is very cool. Number six, see and say. Number six, see and say. Number five, now, I'm, this is one I remember having. I can't tell you a lot about it because it was one of the early memories. And again, it's Fisher-Price, and we're talking about the Fisher-Price clock. Everybody remembers the Fisher-Price price clock, another popular thing. Talk to you how to tell time. I can remember turning the hand on this thing, and I wanted to see what 3 o'clock looked like because that was the time Space Giants came on TV. Well, actually, 305 because it was on TBS, and for some reason, everything came on 5 after on TBS. 305, 335. I don't know what the deal with that was. It was probably some gimmick, so you wouldn't change the channel. But I can remember putting my finger in the hole. The clock hole. The Fisher-Price clock hole. Not that hole. You old perp. But I remember turning it around and seeing what time it was. I remember sitting it like, what time I get out of school. My mom would say, hey, get out of school early in the morning at 12. <laughs> Where's my Fisher-Price clock? I remember that. So I do. So I guess it did teach me how to tell time. And I... Till the digital days of the 80s. Who who didn't want a digital watch in the 80s? You didn't have to worry about where the big hand and the little hand was anymore. And here's one. I don't know if this this was. I guess this fits under educational toy. You don't really think it. This is one that really disguised itself good as being an educational toy. Really good. This was a game called Perfection. Now they probably still make this today. It probably updated. It's probably digital now. It's probably got holograms instead of real plastic. But you push it down, and you got all these shapes. You got like 20 shapes that you have to pick up and put them in the right place. And you can hear the thing ticking. Tick, 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 tick. You got like one minute. And if you don't put it on time right, that thing would pop up in your face. And they had these little metal plastic metal little plastic pieces that had big handles on top of them that would go right into your eye socket. So you're hanging over this thing as a kid looking down at it. Now, it wasn't, didn't have safe toys back then. And it would be ticking like a time bomb. And you're like, it would just, do, 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 do. and you could hear it get closer to that zero. Do, do, and you know it's going to pop in your face. And you're trying to put them all in there so you can stop it in time. Oh, God, it was never wracking. <sighs> it felt like we were, you were one of those guys trying to defuse a bomb or something. It was, it was horrible. Okay, number three. I should have got this toy because it's still at my mom's house. And I don't know if you can, I guess you can call it a toy. I, it was made out of wood. I don't know if it was a Fisher toy company. I don't think Fisher Price made it or anything. Every kindergarten or uh, first grade had it. And this was a, it was made out of wood, had metal in the middle, and had these beads on it. And I think it was supposed to teach you math. You're like, oh, Jenny bought three apples. So you move three of the red beams over then she got two bananas and you get a yellow one you move it over and it was hard to explain but i play with this thing a lot but i didn't do math on it no i just like shooting those things across the wire it had like a you know like a piece of metal wire going across i, just, I love slinging it and the second thing i love to turn it this way and do it like that and they would all drop down pow make a real loud noise about do it over again do it over again and they'll say hey junk kid shut up out there before i come and slap you and i said well slap this Ching, 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 ching. I really loved that. It was, it was a lot of fun. And it still has a green stamp sticker on it. It's at my mom's house. Must have got it at the green stamp store. Who 
Didn't love the green stamp store. Number two. Index cards. Kind of. I was going to put flash cards. You know, math flash cards. Those are horrible too. But this was something I didn't have. But there was always at least one person every year between kindergarten and third grade that had this. And I hated it. It was always so snobby. It was a little green case that you put index cards in. But they were all, they were like National Geographic cards. They were probably different themes. And I remember one guy, one year somebody would have it would buy like every kind of dog breed. And they would have them all laid out in all kinds of order. You'd be like, I think I'm about getting a dog. And some little nerd. And go, oh, what dog you going to get? They pull up, open that big old case and look in it. Oh, you're going to get a chihuahua. Let's see. That's under the seas. Here you go. Chihuahua. Tell you everything about it. Oh, it was like somebody walking around with a Wikipedia box or something. It was horrible. I, it was every nerd kid I knew had that. And it just made me want to... Mm. I remember one time this kid Justin had one, part of second grade. Everybody was at lunch, so I went through his little box. I think he had it all about reptiles. Put them all in a different order. <laughs> so I'm sure he got home and said, Hey, Dad, you want to see a crocodile? And he's like, You idiot! That's a dragon! Okay. Index car. I don't know what you call them. Number one. Hated this toy, but it was fun to play with, but I didn't play with it right. And this was, again, I don't think this was in major brand or anything. I don't know who made this one. But it was a big board. Well, it was a big board, big square. And it had 1 through 10, or 1 through 20 on this side, and 1 through 20 at the top. And it had little windows and slides. And you would go, like, say so you do the 5, you slide it over. Then you go do the other 5. But this one, you slide it up. And in the where it opened up that window, it would tell you the answer to your multiplications. 5 times 5? Well, everybody knows that's 35. And then you go 2 times 9? Whoa, you look inside the window, 26. That's how I learned my multiplication tables. It was awesome. I really like looking at the 11 because it made all the numbers double. I love that. I thought it was really, really funny. I don't know why. Um, the zeros I really like, the tens and the fives. Once you get to about six, you can forget about me trying to do anything multiplication in my head. Six about seven, six, maybe seven. That's about where my limit is. Eight or nines, you can forget it. I don't, you tell me, ask me what eight times something is. I, you lost me. Once you get through the eights and nines. Whew. But anybody remember this? What about you? Do you remember this? I didn't have this as a kid. I didn't need it as a kid. But I originally bought it off eBay so I could slap that toy guru upside the head with it. Well, I'm sure you didn't need anything like that. But that's the multiple, my first multiplier. That's multiplier, not that guy. First multiplier. Uh, well, anyway, that's 10 educational toys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Tell me about some educational toys you had. Or maybe did you have any from this list? Did they drive you crazy? Or were you one of those nerdy kids that had the index card box of everything on file? Oh, let me see. Oh, we've got all the candy here. What is your favorite kind of candy? I got a recipe in here. Oh, oh Quirky. I have all my Action Man figures on index cards. Is this guy making fun of me on the internet? Get my lawyer on the phone. Anyway. Anyway, that's educational toys. Let me know in the comments below about some educational toys you had or if you had any of these. I want to thank you for watching. As always, thumb us in on my content, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk again soon. Hey, jump man <laughs> channel popping though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.